restoration. It's all about team, not about any man. Take control, O oh Lord. Have your way in today's service. Have your way, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. All our members, far and near, let's ask God to prepare their mind, to awaken them now, to begin to link up in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's ask the Holy Spirit of living God to come and teach us his word today concerning dominion over sickness and diseases. That after today, none of us will go through any sickness again. None of us will be part of this pandemic in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let us see you, Lord, and take on the glory. Take on, take on the adoration. Because you are mighty God, receive all the glory. Receive all the glory and adoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's ask God to come and prove himself in today's teaching. Even in all our programs, God to manifest himself. God to manifest himself in the name of Jesus Christ. In every aspect of this program today, God to manifest himself. God to manifest himself, to prove himself. In the name of Jesus Christ, that uh, let's, thank, let's talk to God that everyone that will come on this platform, that God will touch them. Divine visitation upon everyone that will come upon this platform this afternoon. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Now, whatever the sickness, whatever the pain must vanish through this teaching today, whatever the pain that anybody that will be under this platform will be going through. Let's ask God to intervene and flush out such pain in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Now pray for us, sir. Good afternoon, Heavenly Father. Uh, we are so grateful for your incredible love and, and the commitment to each one of us for us to uh, be your sons and daughters, uh, to be your children, to really inherit your kingdom. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the, all the things that you, you are, are leading us, especially that uh, those who are coming to this platform and those who committed to really understand your will, yes, understand the deeper, deeper meaning in the Bible. Yes. Heavenly Father, that we experience uh, such an incredible joy and the glory that you have shown through the yesterday's program. And uh, we all felt that your presence presence of the Holy Spirit, uh, so that we are able to really share our heart, share our understanding, share that uh, uh, your presence in our life, and from the beginning of the age and the, until the end time. Heavenly Father, that today that uh, this platform, that we seek the, your guidance, especially in the area of the dominating dominion over the sickness and disease today there's so many uh, people are wondering mm. in this world because of the pan pandemic mm. but this is not the uh, news always there and uh, this is a phenomena that uh, people have lost lost that uh, their sense the connection with your wisdom and the connection to be righteous, to be pure in spirit. Because of the disconnection with your spirit, that people are, cannot really protect themselves. This disease or all the phenomena that we face is a basically result, result of the, our faith, faithlessness. Please give us the faith. Please give us the strength. Mm. Please give us the power to yeah. really uh, control our body, mm. our action. Yes. 
Heavenly Father, thank you today that we are about to start this session with the Reverend Gabriel, and please let all people join us. Uh, many people join us, and the Lord to speak uh, your spirit and speak your word, and uh, you to unite with your heart and love. And we pray uh, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are welcome, our mommy. Yes. Good afternoon. Uh, four people. Uh, Edna, Reverend Edna, yeah, and Petrikwa. Uh, Reverend Petrikwa is here. Just uh, admitting them. So, you are welcome. Uh, our elder, we know you are welcome from Michigan. Thank from you. Mm, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you, sir. How are you? Good. Fine, sir. You are welcome, sir. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate God once again for the great privilege He's given us to be in His presence always. You know, it is many people want to be in the presence of God at a time like this. But for one reason or the other, they are not. But for us, it's a grace. Yes. Some of us have been in our church in the morning and yet we we'll still come together on a platform like this. It's grace. It's grace. But one thing I want to assure us that in all this, your labor will not be in vain. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to appreciate our Elder David and our mommy Julie for, for their steadfastness. You know, for their steadfastness, God will continue to strengthen these great couples, and you will continue. You will live to enjoy the fruit of your labors in Jesus' name. Amen. And later we see our Reverend Reverend Edna, Reverend Bruce, and Co. We are always encouraged too. Hallelujah. Thank you. I I, I will put myself on. Uh... Mute, so because I, since I'm driving, I don't want background noise for you. Okay, sir. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Yes. Uh, and everyone that have been on this platform, many people are still coming up. I appreciate all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. By his infinite mercy, we shall all make heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Last week, we talked about dominion over Satan. And God, in infinite message, took us from scripture to scripture to tell us, not only to tell us, to make us know that Satan has no power. That he only acts on what we say. Yes. He did not know what is in our mind. Okay. Because he's not our creator. The difference between God and Satan is that God is the one is our creator. He knows our beginning from our ending. Amen. Even when you don't talk, God knows what is in your heart. Yes. You know what is in your heart, you know what is in my heart. Yes. The Alpha and the Omega. Revelation 22, verse 13. Is revelation is Alpha and the Omega. So in other words, the word Alpha and Omega means the beginning and the end. So he, he knows me and you from beginning to the end because he created us in, in his own image. Yeah. In his own image. And then at the end of the day, he said, we are what? Perfect. We are excellent. That is Genesis 1, that's 1. So and we are able to know that Satan, like I said, Satan has no power. He only acts on what you say. That's the more reason, as a believer, 
one of, one of the virtues or one of the things we need to learn fast is to sometimes to talk less. Not every situation that we need to uh, voice out. Praise the Lord. Because uh, the devil acts on our unguided moment. He looks for the unguided moment of every believer. So the Bible now says, the word of God says, we should watch and do what? And pray. Watch and pray. And then if by adventure he, he, he raises his ugly head, then the word of God says again, I will do what? Resist him. That one will resist him. He will do what? He will flew away. He will flew away. Hallelujah. So mm -hmm. and I want to believe God that after that teaching, as many that were on this platform were able to not know that the devil has no power Amen. over any one of us. Amen. God has created us to have dominion over him. Yes. God has created us to have dominion over him. Hallelujah. Amen. And thank God, yesterday again, we are in this platform and God helped us again to extray his word. And he taught us his word from point to point. Praise the Lord. Once again, I pray our labor will not be in vain. And by his grace, we shall all make heaven in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today, we'll be looking at dominion over sickness and diseases. Dominion over sicknesses and diseases. Hallelujah. Now, this teaching is coming. You will be, we still have so many teachings that we're going to go through talking about dominion, dominion of this, dominion of that. You know, this is to let us know that indeed God has created me and you to dominate this act. Whatever it is, God has created me and you to do what? To do what? To dominate this act. He did not, he did not create Satan, Satan had no power to dominate this act. Hallelujah. So next week again, we'll be talking about dominion, dominion of another area. Particularly, we'll be looking at the dominion in another area. Before, by the time we finish this service, God helping us, I will let us know that. But for today's teaching, we'll be looking at dominion over sicknesses and diseases. So God will be, will be going from scripture to scripture to let us know that we have that dominion over sicknesses and diseases. When God created me and you, he created us in his own image. He created us in his own image in Genesis 1, 26. He created us in his own image. And in Genesis 28, he said we should do what? Multiply. Be fruitful and replenish the earth. And dominate, then subdue. Amen. God, God created us in his own image. So in other words, when he created us in his own image, there's no sickness there. At all. There's no diseases. At all. So why do we have disease today? Why do we have sicknesses today? As we progress on in this teaching, we'll begin to see what has caused some of these things. And then God, will, from his word again, we'll see that God from beginning has given me and you the power to dominate and to overcome sickness and diseases. That mm -hmm. as you grow, either as a man or as a woman, you are not permitted to do what? To break down. Amen. You are not permitted to break down. You are not, you are not permitted to see medication as a lifestyle. Amen. Many Christians today, medication has become part of their lifestyle. Yes. But no. We do have a prayer section, uh, pray, online prayer, uh, power night. On Wednesdays, we prayed one prayer there. That God, give me the mantle. The mantle to live outside medication. Because you see all this medication, they still have adverse effects. Yes. On woman, on, on, on woman body. Yes. They still have adverse effects on woman body. Yeah. So 
when God created us, he created us his, his own image. And when, what, what I do ask myself several times is that Jesus Christ came in form of man. That, there was no story that he broke down one day. Mm -mm. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, you name it. All of them, they never broke down. Mm -hmm. The only time we will uh, know that they are weak or so is that when they're back, you know, going back to God. That's when we will read, oh, they, they slept with their father and then they are gone. What are the apostles in the New Testament? The same thing. We never had that Peter broke down. We never had that Paul, James, all of them broke down one day. So and I pray God that our teaching comes up, the mantle, mm -hmm. the power, the enablement to dominate sickness and sin will mm -hmm. be injected into us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our text this morning is taken from, or this afternoon, is taken from Exodus chapter 15, verse 23. Exodus 15, 23, 24, 25, 26. These are the three I want to read today. Dominion over sicknesses and diseases. Exodus 15 and verse 23. And now when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara. For they were, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of the, therefore the name of it was called Mara. Hallelujah. Now, this was the journey of the children of Israelites to the land of Canaan. And they came, out, they came to a point where they needed to drink water, but there was no water. The only water they saw was the water called Mara. And that water, the word Mara means bitterness or bitter. So there's no way they can drink such a water. Praise the Lord. That on its own is a disease. But let's see, let's progress this on by, to verse 24. So, and the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? They murmured. The word murmured again is that they spoke against their leader. They spoke against their leader, which was not too good. Hallelujah. Verse 25. And he cried, Moses now, Moses cried unto the Lord. And uh, the Lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into, which he had cast into the water, the water was what? The water was made sweet. There he made for him a status and an altar there. Praise the Lord. He made an altar mm -hmm. there and there he proved them. He proved the children of Israel as wrong by letting them know that God is the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. He proved to the children of Israelites that the God we serve is not a dead God, but a living God. Mm -hmm. Who knows our beginning and our end? Who has the blueprint of our destiny? When he promises, he cannot fail. He promised the children of Israel that is taking them to the land of Canaan, Hallelujah. The land of um, milk and honey. But we discover that in this journey, each time impatience will not, impatience will come into the life of the people and they will murmur against Moses. It's not that they murmur against God. And this question of murmuring is, is still prominent in our life today. But after this teaching, I pray God, every spirit, every demonic force of impatience Blood of Jesus Christ will water me away from my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, verse 26 is where the main thing is. See the word of God in verse 26 of Exodus chapter 15. See, and he said, If thou wilt diligently akin to the voice of the Lord, thy God. I repeat, if thou wilt diligently akin to the voice of the Lord, thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. If we're asking, if me, if you 
we are diligently to the voice of the Lord our God and to do that which is want us to do according to his commandments. Please, when you read your Bible, you will see the word, you know, comma, comma there. It means something. For you to be able to over, to dominate sicknesses and diseases, number one thing here that God is telling us this, this afternoon is that we must be able to do what? Diligently akin to his voice. Not only to his voice, but to do that which is right before God and see, and will give air to his commandments. Not only to give air to his commandment and keep all his status. And I will, God speaking now, say, I will put none, he almighty God, will put none of these diseases upon any one of us, which he almighty God has brought upon the Egyptians, which God himself has brought upon the Egyptians. Now said, for I am the Lord that he led thee. He is the Lord that he led thee. I don't know if you have taken time to know the motto. Now, this teaching is not condemning uh, uh, hospital or <laughs> uh, taking medication. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. not condemning it at all. If your faith is so strong to that point where you cannot take it, fine and good, but if your faith is not as strong as that, please do that which is right that you know is good for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, now, if you go and see the mottos of the physicians or the doctors, it is written, we care, but God heals. Am I right? Yes. We, they, they say they care, that's their motto, but God is one that does what? That heals. Yes. There, are, yes. there are also instruments that God is using to do what? To manifest his healing power. The physicians or the doctors, they are also instruments. So the same way you as a minister of God or you as a leader, when you give yourself to God, you are also an instrument that God can use to manifest his power, his healing power upon your life, upon as many that comes your way. Amen. Hallelujah. So many Amen. people come to our church then back when I was in Nigeria, even here in America, yeah. Somebody was in America, yeah, somebody was having diabetes. And we had a program, healing service. And after that service, diabetes was gone. Diabetes was gone. And when she went to the doctor, the doctor was like, where did you go? What did you take? She said it was God. That our service was done. So, 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 so what happened? The doctor was shocked. Praise the Lord. That's what God can Hallelujah. do. That's what God can do. What sicknesses God has what has done what has healed them. Praise the Lord. As many that Hallelujah. went through coronavirus or whatever thing, it is God that has perfected the healing in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, It's God that does what? That he led thee. God mm -hmm. created man, listen to this. God created man without what? Without infirmity. God created us without infirmity in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. See, all that he created was what? Was perfect, excellent, brand new. He created, he created you brand new. No coughing, no pain, no waist pain, no arthritis, no diabetes, no blood pressure. You know, no cancer. No cancer. Hallelujah. Name it, name the, name, the, uh, name the sickness, whatever it is, leukemia, whatever they call it. No, he created us without what? Without infirmity, without diseases, without, without sickness at all. So he, 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 he guaranteed us a safe journey in this life, a sweatless breakthrough in life. How he guaranteed us? But what happened? Sickness came into the world through the fall of man. Sickness, diseases came into the world when man fell at the garden of Eden. Look at that. 
disobedient brought sicknesses and diseases. That's where it started. But even as at that, God's original plan for you and me still stands. I repeat, God's original plan for you and me to have clear health bill still do what? Still stands. God's original plan for you and me to dominate sickness and diseases still what? Still stands. His word is yea and amen. In the beginning was the word. The word was God and the word was with God. John chapter 1 and verse 12. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sickness, sicknesses, you know, sicknesses feed on sin. And it started everything. started from the Garden of Eden. Provision for healing was accomplished in the work of atonement. Now, even though sickness and diseases started after that disobedience and the Garden of Eden, and it took over the whole world, to accomplish God's work, to let me and you know that his promise, his plan for us still stands to dominate sickness and diseases. He made a provision for us in atonement. In atonement, provision for healing was accomplished in atonement. Provision for healing was accomplished at the cross of Calvary, at the street of Golgotha. Praise the Lord. So that's what God's plan still stand. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 24. Who is First Peter chapter 2, verse 24? Who is own self bore our sins? Jesus Christ did what? He bore our sins in his own body. He carried our sin, he took over our sin and into his own body on the tree at the street of Golgotha that we being dead to sins should live unto what? Righteousness. Mark that word in your Bible. Righteousness. That we should live unto righteousness. In other words, after the scenario at the, Golgotha, at the city of Golgotha he made righteousness available for us to live a life of righteousness, for us to be able to dominate sickness and diseases. By whose soul scribes, I and you were what? We are healed. Hallelujah. Many take this statement in this scripture for granted and say, after all, Jesus Christ, have, he died for us, he has taken over my sin. So therefore, I, you know, I am free. Yes, he has died for us. He has taken over our sins. But what's not causing sickness again? That we are going to see. And one of them have told us that disobedient cost it right from the garden of freedom for eating the forbidden fruits. And as of today, men and women continue to eat forbidden fruits. And in this teaching today, we will see some of those forbidden fruits. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want to quickly move the products of dominion over sicknesses and diseases. The products of dominion over sicknesses and diseases. Number one is that you must unconditionally submit yourself to Jesus Christ. For you to have dominion over sicknesses and diseases, you must unconditionally submit yourself to Jesus Christ. That you begin to, you begin to allow Jesus Christ to rule and reign in your life. To allow Jesus Christ to direct your path. That no matter the level we want to achieve in life, it's only God that can do it. 
unconditionally submit to Jesus Christ without any excuses that my job cannot debar me not to be in the presence of God. Whatever physical assignment I have cannot debar me not to be in the presence of God. Many will say they submit themselves to Jesus Christ. And they will come to church, they will pray and pray and pray, looking for one thing or the other. Immediately they get that miracle. They begin to give excuses. Some are looking for a job. When they got that job, you will still say, giving excuses, you cannot be in the presence of God again. Some are looking for the fruit of the womb. They will get the fruit of the womb by coming to the presence of God. And immediately they bear that child, they will be occupied. They will not be present again in the presence of God. So you can see, disobedience. Partial disobedience is complete disobedience. That's right. Partial disobedience equals complete, total, absolute, completely disobedience. Yes. So we must get to that point. You want to dominate sickness and diseases. You want to live a life that is free from sicknesses. You want to live a life that you not break down today, you wake up tomorrow. You want to live your, you want to live a life that you'll be free from daily medication. Taking medication on daily basis. That without medication, you cannot stand up from the bed. Without medication, you cannot go out. Without medication, you cannot think straight. No dominion over sickness and diseases. God has given me and you the power. But number one, he said, look, we should unconditionally submit ourselves unto him. Now let's quickly see scriptures. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. But ye seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You want to dominate sicknesses and diseases. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the Bible now says, and all these things shall be added unto you. He did not say seek dollar first. <laughs> he did not say seek position first. No. When, he was, when God was making this statement, all of, there was nothing like pastor or bishop or pope. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was not like husband or wife. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But what happened when we come to America like this? I want to pay my bill. I want to do this. I want to do that. Commitment to God begin to do what? Begin to reduce. Because he wants to pay bill. For crying out loud. The country, your country, where you came in from, are you not paying bill there? <laughs> you pay bill there. So coming to America to pay bill is not a new thing. It's not a new thing. It's a trick of the enemy to drift man and woman away from enjoying dominion over sickness and diseases that he will not, he will not plug into man. That excuse. God will deliver us in Jesus' name. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Unconditional submission to Jesus Christ. Number two, number two, for you to have dominion over sicknesses and diseases. Number two point here is that always appropriate the word of God unto yourself. Always appropriate the word of God unto yourself. God has promised me and you dominion over sickness and diseases. It's there in the word of God. But if you don't read the word of God, you cannot know it. If you submit yourself to Jesus Christ and it stops there, you don't read the word of God on a daily basis to ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. There is no way you can understand the promise of God concerning dominion over sicknesses and diseases. And that's what is happening today. Many, many don't have that, that time to read the word of God. They preoccupy themselves with the activities of this world. 
And some that even go to church, they only go to church for show off. For show off. That's what they go to do in the church. When they finish service, ask them what was preached. They forgot. Praise the Lord. Always appropriate it. And in, at the point, that, must, that point must come. Because you are not wood and you are not iron. Even though you don't go to a spiritual, there will be a time you will break down. Walk, 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 you will break down. Even though if you don't do any work, just read, uh, maybe sleeping at home 24 7 or doing mina mina, you will break down one day. But when you are able to read the word of God on a daily basis, study it on a daily basis, ask the Holy Spirit for understanding and interpretation of His word. At that particular point, when you come to the T junction of life, when, it, when sicknesses want to stroke or diseases, you appropriate that word of God. And you see it working for you. There are people who have exercises in the Bible. If you look at Ezekiah in Isaiah 38, he was told to arrange himself that he's going to die. What did he do? He appropriated the word of God and that elongated his life. Psalm 107 verse 20. Let's see what the word of God says. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and he led them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word. The word of God is, has the capacity to destroy sicknesses and diseases provided you can appropriate it this period that we are in right now untimely death has taken place so you know in so many places so many people that died are not supposed to die that's the bitter truth so many at the point of death at, at that point they are looking for those who are going to pray for them some people see pastors as a contractor, prayer contractor. There will be a time the pastor will not be there. There will be a time the cell phone will disappoint you. That's the model you must give yourself to the study of the word of God. That when that T, when you get that T junction, of, T junction of life, the Holy Spirit will download to you the word to appropriate that suit that situation. He said he sent his word. And that word did what? He healed them. He healed me and you. Delivered me and you. From what? From destruction. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. And the word was with God. I hear so many people say, they will say, greater is it that is in me than that which is in the world. First John chapter 4, verse 4, part B. But he's saying, he's, he's, saying, he's making that statement, mm -hmm. but he's not believing it. It's not having faith in it. When you are prepared the word of God, it must come with complete, absolute belief. And that's how it works. Matthew chapter 8, from verses 5 to 13, it talks about the centurion. The centurion, his servant was sick. They've taken his servant to so many places, even to doctors, to whatever place they want to go to. But his servant will not be healed. The sickness persisted. Not until when he heard that Jesus Christ was passing by. And he went for Jesus Christ. And when he met with our Lord Jesus Christ, our Jesus Christ told him that look, for your faith, for your belief in the word of God, your servant is healed. The man was like saying, look, Jesus Christ, you need to come to my house and see this boy and lay your hands upon him. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, look, I don't need to come to your house. Go, you just go back there. Your boy is what? He's healed already in verse 13. See what he said in verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way and as thou have believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was what? Was healed in the same time. In the same time. 
the man believed, and because he believed, the servant was healed. You can imagine, he's not the one that is sick now. The servant is the one that is sick. So your belief can provoke the healing of somebody else. Your belief in God can trigger and increase the belief of the, your neighbor or your sister or your brother that's close to you. That was happening here. Appropriate the word of God unto yourself to be able to dominate sicknesses and diseases. Number three, maintain a healthy lifestyle. Number three product is that you maintain a healthy lifestyle for you to dominate sicknesses and diseases. Many are living a rough lifestyle. Rough lifestyle. When they leave their various countries and they go to America, they saw America as another jamboree. It's not so, sir. It's not so, ma. It's another time to continue to be committed to the service of God. It's not a time to party party. It's not a time to be going to clubhouse. It's not a time to be carrying, you know, to be doing whatever thing that is not of God. Maintain a healthy lifestyle. Eat good food. There are a lot of food in America. There are a lot of fruits in America. That as you progress this on, as God blesses you, you eat whatever thing you need to eat. Hallelujah. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 14, 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. As we make up our mind, as we make up our mind to live a healthy life, do things decently. Do things decently. You are no more, it's, all things have passed away. You are no more on the other side. You are now a born again child. You are now a Christian. So live the life of a Christian. Live the life of a Christian. Disease and sickness is, is not meant for the for the for the world. Those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal and savior. As their personal and savior. That is it. That is it. Because immediately you accept Jesus Christ as a personal and savior, you have what is called divine immunity. Divine immunity. The Holy Spirit of living God sanitizes your environment from time to time. And anywhere you find yourself is your Goshen. And in Goshen, there is no sicknesses and there is no diseases. Sickness and disease cannot come near there. Blood of Jesus Christ covers you. Say, when I see the blood, I will pass over. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. Say, when I see the blood, I will pass over. When he sees the blood, sickness will do what? Devil will carry his sickness and disease away. That is it. It works. Do things decently. When it is time for you to sleep, go and sleep. Don't overwork yourself. What you become in life, God knows it already. Many people live rough life because they don't know that God owns their destiny. The amount of dollars everybody's going to make in a year, God knows it. No matter how hard you work, no matter how hard you overcharge yourself because you want to pay bills, God knows how much you are going to earn at the end of the year. You know what I'm going to make at the end of the year. So we must not lose sight of living a healthy lifestyle. Number four, living... Number four point here is living holy and righteously. Living holy and righteously. We saw it in one of our scriptures in that uh, First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Righteous living. Jesus Christ came, and when he ascended back to heaven, he left a blueprint of righteousness and holiness. He left a blueprint of righteousness and holiness. Proverbs, uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse 4 and 5. Romans chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. I repeat, for Christ is the end of the law 
for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Verse 5. Verse 5. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at that word. When you read the word of God, try and pause for a while and think of it. Is the end of the law, the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ stands for. For he described the righteousness which is of the law that man which doeth these things shall be what shall do what shall also live by it. When you prophesy righteousness, make sure you live by that same righteousness. Dominion over sicknesses and diseases. So you will now see why so many people are living under medication consistently and persistently. Don't wait until when you break down, when that thing is come to a worse point, where you'll now be seeking for God. Mm -mm. <laughs> Pay the price now for righteousness and escape sickness and diseases. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's see Second Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Say, having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. What are you doing when nobody is there and you know that it is wrong? Why don't you leave it? It, it has no gain. It doesn't pay. I learned that so many people, they will not go to a church where they preach the undiluted word of God. They go to a place where they want to hear what they want to hear. Good luck. For all that God has, for all that God, that God has chosen, let's remain steadfast in the Lord and continue to do the right thing because that's what's going to speak for you I mean eternity. Cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now, let's quickly go. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. We're talking about dominion over sickness and diseases. And for you, to be able to over, for you to be able to have dominion over sickness and diseases, you need to live a holy and righteous life. Romans 12 verse 1. I beseeched you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that to present your bodies a living sacrifice. We must present our body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is what? Our reasonable service. I hear many people say, ah, no, it's my body. I, you cannot control me, it's my body. Sir, ma, it's not, our body is not our body, it's not our own. God has paid the price. God has paid the price. And a second coming is coming for this body. It's coming for our body. The second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is coming for our body. That does it. Nobody owns his body. Nobody owns his body. If not, some of the things that's happening today will not happen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Present your body as a holy as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, living holy and righteously. Number five, number five, abstaining from all acts of sexual immorality. We are talking about dominion over sicknesses and diseases. For you to be able to have dominion over sicknesses and diseases, you must abstain from all acts, or put it this way, every act of every act of sexual immorality. So many people today, they contacted one disease or the other through sexual immorality. 
husband and wife have died today because of the man or the woman is playing extramarital activity. Extramarital activity. Some leaders, they find pleasure sleeping with their church members. They find pleasure sleeping with their church members. Some will even say they want to use condom. Condom has failed several times. So the best thing to abstain from sexual immorality. It is sexual immorality that will make a man to be going from one woman to the other. When you see brown, you want to have sex with, with her. When you see green, you want to have sex with her. When you see you want anything scared, you will not know, pass. And by so doing, he has done what? He has contacted disease. Let's see 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and uh, 17. I want us to see these scriptures. And if you don't mind, please note them and uh, read them again and again and again. And then teach as many that comes your way, particularly those of us who are leaders in our churches. It will help a great deal. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse um, uh, 16 and uh, 17. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Look at that. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a question. It's a question. Do you not know that you are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Now, see the answer. If anyone defies the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are you? For the temple of God is holy. So many people, they play sexual immorality when they were young. Saying, oh, well, I'm young. I want to, I'm a young man. I'm a young lady. In the process, he has contacted disease. And that disease is hiding somewhere in the body. When he's getting to the age of 40 or 50, it will start manifesting. You will be surprised. Ah, where did I go? I'm now born again. What did I do? What did I eat? He has forgotten that the rough game he played or she played when he was young is what he's playing off now. That's the more reason in our churches we must try and teach the youth. Look at some people now at age 40, they are looking as if they are 80, 90 already. Because in the spirit world, they have gone. They are gone. The spirit dictates the physical. In the physical here, they are gone. In the spirit world, they are gone. Because why? The game, the rough game he played when he was young. Now let's see scripture again. First Corinthians chapter 6. That's in chapter, chapter 6 now, verse 15 to 20. First Corinthians 6, 15 to 20. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15 to 20. Verse 15 to 20. Praise the Lord. No, that's the you, your bodies are you, the body of the Christ. You want, to, you want to ask question? Oh, this is the verse, right? I read it. I read it. <laughs> uh, okay. this, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians 15. Okay, you want to read? Okay, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ. Uh -huh. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a horror? Mm -hmm. Certainly not. Mm -hmm. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a horror is one body with her? With her? For the two, he said, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. We are going to verse 20. Free sexual immorality. <clears throat> Everything that the man does is outside the body, but the who commit sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, 
<laughs> and you are not your own, for you are bought at a price. Mm -hmm. Therefore, glory God, glorify God in your body and yes, in your spirit, which are God. God bless you, sir. Now look at that word. Say, do you not know that you have been bought with a price? Our body is not our body. It's, it's God that owns our body. Let's try as much as we can teach this thing. Sexual immorality has, has truncated so many destinies, both men and women in this generation. Even leaders in the church. Like I was telling us on this platform yesterday, what will it make a minister of God to leave his wife, to go and meet another wife, or another woman? It's sexual immorality. Sexual immorality. And this is happening. We must be able to, to begin to bring it up and let people know that these things are the root cause of some of the sickness and disease that's happening around. Praise the Lord. That mm -hmm. when, we, when anyone that operates in it, we lost the right to dominate sicknesses and diseases. Mm -hmm. Number six point here, abstain from worldly lifestyle. I'm talking about product of dominion over sicknesses and diseases. Number six point is that abstaining from worldly lifestyle of smoking and drinking alcohol causing chronic sicknesses and diseases. So many people, they give themselves into smoke, they don't see anything bad in it. But do you know what? Guess what? The company that produces cigarettes wrote at the body of cigarette there, yeah, smokers are liable to death. Smokers are liable. It's written boldly on the body, on the pack of, of cigar. Yeah. And I tell people when I meet them, I say, how can you use your hard-earned money to go and be buying debt? Or to go and, to go and be buying debt? He said he's going through stress. He's going through uh, uh, pressure. Pressure. Oh, so the therapy of pressure is smoking. Don't you see what devil is doing? So many on their own, they've given themselves to devil. Even in the church, some leaders, they still smoke. They smoke secretly. And some of them, after smoking, they use brush to brush their teeth. Some of them will go and take uh, uh, some, some sweets that has mentor. What about drinking? At last, some ministers will have to take some alcohol before they can come and preach. Some youths today have given themselves to alcohol. And in the process, they end up badly. These are, these are what? Worldly lifestyle that many have found themselves in America and truncated destinies. Truncated destinies. Praise the Lord. Worldly lifestyle that after drinking, after smoking, by the time a policeman come and say, oh, stop there, he begin to argue because already he's high already. He has gone for extra power. Of alcoholism. Mm -hmm. Now let's see what let let's see what the Bible tells us. Proverbs twenty one verse one. Proverbs twenty verse one. Proverbs twenty and verse mm -hmm. one. Proverbs chapter twenty and verse one. You can read for us, sir. Huh? Are you reading? Yes. Verse 1 of Proverbs 20. Wine is a mocker 
strong drink is a brawler. And whoever is led, whoever is led astray, it is, it's not wise. Look at that. Anybody that gives himself to drinking or smoking is not wise. It's the word of God, not my word, not your word. Praise the Lord. Oh. He, said, he said he's feeling cold. So the only way he can subdue that cold is to take alcoholic drink, is to smoke. He's a professor. He's a theologian. Whatever the study, whatever the level, the Bible says what? He's a mocker. He mocks the person. He's a mocker. And then I said, even that person is not wise. No matter his level. He said he's not wise. Now let's quickly go. Let's quickly move. Proverbs 23 and verse 19 to 21. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23, 19 to 21. 19 to 21. Hear my son, and guide your heart in the way. Do not mix with wine, wine deep vipers, or with uh, gluttonous eaters, gluttonous eaters of the meat. For the drunkard and the gluten, gluten, gluten will come to poverty, mm -hmm. and the uh, drowsiness will uh, cross a man with wrath. Look at that. Whoever that gives himself to smoking and drinking ends in poverty. He, he or she will never remember changing his wardrobe. <clears throat> Because instead of using that money to go and buy something good for himself or eat good food, the first that comes to his mind is to smoke and to drink. They go together. The Bible says the person will do what? We end up in rags. In rags. Go and check it. All of them that is to eat. I was telling a youth some few last week in Spring Valley here when I met him, he was smoking. I said, look at you. You are smoking now. You will say, okay, it is just one dollar. It is just two dollar. Now calculate one that two dollar or one dollar in a week times one month times 365 days. It has gone to some thousands of dollars. That will have earned him something good. Maybe a house of his own. But today, he's looking for support, government support. Some young ladies, they've ended up in the, in the, in, in the, in the, in the art of uh, sexual immorality, ended up giving child to a known man, to a known father. In America, yeah. So the church has a lot of role to play. And in the process, she talked about stress. She talked about frustration then ended up into smoking and drinking. To change her wardrobe is very difficult. To eat good food is a mirage. And this also affects the young, the innocent young child. The Bible says they end up in poverty and they end up in rag. It's the word of God. Now let's share this last one. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. We're running up right now. Dominion over sicknesses and diseases. Abstaining from worldly lifestyle of smoking and drinking. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. Woe to those who rise, who rise early in the morning. Mark that scripture. Woe, the word woe mean, means cause to those who raise up who rise early in the morning that they may fall, that they may follow intoxicating drink. Cause to those who rise up early in the morning that they may follow intoxicating drink 
who continue until night, till wine inflames them. When they take one, they don't stop there. They take another. They won't go as far as buying for others. Look at that. The word of God says, woe to them. Woe to them. The harp and the springs, the tambourine and flutes. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. And wine are in their feet. They play whatever music, worldly music goes with it. Worldly music go with it. And then that's the feast on it. But see, but they do not regard the work of the Lord. Is that true? That is true. Nor consider the operation of his hand. Verse 13. Therefore, my people, my, therefore, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Their honorable men are, are famed and their multitude dried up with what? With taste. They send themselves into captivity for that, for smoking and drinking. We are seeing it in our society today. We must make these scriptures known to as many that comes our way. For us to be able, for them to be able to dominate sicknesses and diseases. Dominion over sicknesses and diseases. Number seven. Number seven. Total obedience to God and his commandment. Total obedience to God and his commandment. As, um, Exodus 23, 25. Exodus 23 and uh, 25. And he cried, Exodus 23, and the 25. Total obedience to the commandment, total obedience to God and his commandments. We saw it in Exodus 23, sorry, 23, yeah, 23, 25. I would hear Exodus 23 and verse 25. Dominion over sicknesses and diseases. Exodus 23. And 25. So, so, so you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sicknesses away from the midst of you. Look at that. You shall serve the Lord your God. Commitment to God and his service. Commitment to God and his service. I'm taking that together because of our time now. Commitment to God and His service. Uh, Exodus, Exodus 1, Exodus, Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 15, 26. And He said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in His sight, and, and give air to His commandments, and keep all His titles, I will Put none of the diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. I am the Lord God that he led thee. So, obedience to his commandment and to the service of God, they go hand in hand. You cannot be committed to the service of God in truth and spirit and experience any breaking down. Hallelujah. And lastly, on this note, desire the healing power of God through prayers. Desire the healing power of God through prayers. We saw in Luke chapter 5, verse 17, we saw when our Lord Jesus Christ was ministering, the power of God was present to heal as men that were there. Luke 5, 17. The power of God was, there was was present to heal as many that were present there. That were present there. And when you go to Matthew chapter 10 and uh, verse 7. Now, Luke 5, 17. Now it happens on a certain day, he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by 
who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. To heal them. The power of God was present to heal them. Matthew 10 and verse 1. He gave the apostles power to heal all manners of all manner of sickness and diseases. Matthew 10, verse 1. And when he has called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. Look at that. Power. Power belongs to God. You have to desire it so that when you break down, you don't begin to think of uh, rushing to here and there. You pray first. You pray first. And when you do that, God will answer you in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Lastly, James chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. James 5, verse 15 and 16. James chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. Dominion over sicknesses and diseases. These are what we need to know to be able to sustain our dominion over sicknesses and diseases. God has promised us a free and a healthy life journey. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Verse 16. Confess your trespasses to one another. And pray for one another. That ye may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Avails much. Prayer is fundamental here. Prayer is key. Prayer is key. We must give ourselves to prayer on daily basis. On daily basis. Hallelujah. The more we pray, the more we get closer to God. The more we read our scripture, the more we are closer, we, the more we know about God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have our dominion over sicknesses. And this we have seen, unconditional submission to Jesus Christ. Appro always appropriate the word of God to yourself. Maintain a healthy lifestyle. Living holy and righteously. Hallelujah. Maintaining Maintaining a good life, maintain a good life, abstaining from all acts of sexual immorality, abstaining from worldly lifestyle of smoking and the drinking alcohol, and then total obedience to God's commandment and to the service of God. And lastly, desire the healing power of God through prayers. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. The Lord. Shall we talk to God briefly here? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Ask God for his healing power upon your life. Ask God for his healing power. Ask God for healing power. I don't know what's, what's that area that is paining you. It has been there for years. The healing power is on this platform. Ask God, say, God, heal me. He's a God of health and cure. God, I am tired of this sickness. I am tired of this pain. I submit myself unto you, Lord. Let every source ask God to dry up that source, the source of that of that sickness, the source of that pain. Ask God to dry it up in your life. Lord God, dry up the source of this pain. Dry it up now. I don't want them again. I've given my life unto you. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I refuse a lifestyle of medication. I refuse, I reject a lifestyle of medication. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Father, take all the glory, take all the honor, take all the adoration. Mm -hmm. I've had your word concerning dominion over sickness and diseases. Father, mm -hmm. I pray the power to dominate sin and diseases. Let it be released unto all right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we have prayed unto you, O Lord, as many that are going through one pain in their body or so, you know better than we know. Our body is our own temple. And your word says, Lord, nothing shall defile it. So therefore, every pain in the body of anyone on this platform, whatever the sickness you have been going through before now, that you are present on this platform, I decree, ah, the source of that pain, the source of that sickness, dry up now in your life, in Jesus' name. Amen. I decree, the source of that pain, the source of that sickness in your body, let them begin to dry up now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, mighty everlasting God, you are God that healed thee. Do yes, it Lord. now. For Amen. as many on this platform right now, in Jesus' name, I declare the life of constant and perpetual medication to come to an end in your life now, in Jesus' name. Amen. I decree longevity. Amen. I decree soul prosperity upon the life of us men that are here now till eternity. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Gabriel, Reverend Gabriel. Mm. Yeah, your voice really, really resonated uh, in our heart, your mind, our mind. And uh, uh, especially uh, from the yesterday that we, we studied, we learned about uh, uh, the fall, fall of the man, fall of man. And uh, this, like you said, that everything, all the disease and sickness started from after the fall of man. The, this situation we are in is nothing to do with the God's original creation, and God's original plan. So that's really true. God created us in his own image. We are the temple of God, holy temple of God. And uh, I just the number five really struck me that uh, we have to abstain from the all sexual immorality. This is uh, <clears throat> the yesterday's study. We learned the Jude six seven. The the first uh, for, uh, foreign act uh, angels committed was the sexual immorality. And uh, that is the beginning of the fall. So sexual immorality destroyed uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And sexual immorality destroyed the uh, Roman Empire. Sexual immorality destroying America today. So the sexual immorality actually destroyed the uh, young people and that their life is completely ruined from early on. Then the, once the sexual immorality takes place in the family, then the divorce and the, all kinds of uh, uh, destruction in the family. That produces the children that the who has psychological, psychological problem. They cannot live life by trusting, trusting God, trusting parents. So this, this is a, this, this is a huge portion of the cause, uh, maybe main or root, root cause of the, of the disease and sickness and uh, mentally and physically and destroying our life. So I really appreciate that. Uh, uh, this this was so clearly laid out. What what we need to do? What is our responsibility? That many people probably today blame blame disease because of the disease, the coronavirus that we become sick. 
But actually, the, what what uh, this is uh, today the scripture reveals actually it's not the disease or not the uh, uh, environment we are in, but it's our, ourself. Our we have we have to obey the commandment. We have to take care of our health and body, and we have to be holy and righteous. So it is so true. I really appreciate that. All this, everything is laid out so clearly. And uh, thank God, and we, I hope that this will be uh, delivered to as many as people possible. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am um, extremely blessed to hear the word being delivered. And I just want to make a point that I think is important for us to take away. It's that we need all of the ingredients that you just mentioned. That means you cannot have um, a committed life um, without being in the word and without your strong belief that God is able to deliver you from healing, believing that he promised that none of these diseases will come upon you. If you believe the word and you live by the word, it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes who you are, and in your operation, you are staying yourself committed to God, and you are staying um, sanctified, and by sanctified, I mean you're staying away from immorality. And so when you go down the list, every one of them is important. You have to recognize that even though we um, are followers of Christ and we are, uh, in, you know, really believing in, in, in enriching ourselves spiritually, but we still have got to take care of our bodies, proper rest. We have to take care of our bodies, eating properly. We have some um, Christians, and I, and, and I know I'm guilty. When I was a young woman in this country in my 20s, I used to work two, three jobs. It was like ongoing, not understanding the impact that that has on your body. Because we're not robots. We're not robots. We have to take time to take care of ourselves and to have a proper rest and nutrition and eating the things that are beneficial to our bodies. So it become a lifestyle. You're going to stay away, thank God. I thank God for the church, grew up in the church, and, you know, um, staying away from alcohol, staying away from all these drugs and all, even cigarettes. Never smoked one day in my life. It's all because I, I, I just was like, Church was it, you know. It was school and church, I must tell you. That was my life. And I remember talking to a woman one day, and she looked at me and said, you have a boring life, but I'm glad that I have a boring life because that boring life has kept me from all diseases. At my age, I have no kind of disease, no kind of illness, and to God be the glory. God bless you. Keep on preaching, man of God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. The response and uh, contribution. Um, this 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 has been an awesome teaching. Um From the culture that I come from, it's hard because um, back then, when I was a, a kid, the culture was crazy because they look at men and they don't do anything to, to boys. They are like, the boys can do whatever they want. And then the church is something that was just really coming up of age. When I was young, so 
To be honest with you, I wish, I wish I have been taught all these things back then. But I, I love it that I am, even now that I'm hearing it, it's a good thing to know. It's a good thing to observe because I, I am guilty of, it was like he was preaching about me, you know? So, but I thank God that God has been good to me that um, I escaped most of the illnesses, like he said, because God knows the hearts. And um, these are things that I believe kids should know because I grew up as a Catholic. Catholics, we didn't do all this Bible study in those days. It was just about catechism, catechism, catechism stuff. I'm not blaming the church. I'm just saying the way it was. There's today now, the Catholics have already changed their way of teaching too, that they, they teach more of the Bible and to let the kids know the word instead of just some arrangements that the Catholic organization made. So I thank God, and I thank God for this program, um, for putting it out the way Father Gabriel put it out. It's, it's really awesome. And I thank God that I'm part of it today. Praise yeah. God. Thank you for sharing. Oh, yeah. Edna, what do you have to share? Edna. Reverend Edna. Edna. Um, next week, before Edna comes on, next week, God help you, we'll be looking at dominion, dominion over the storms of life. Dominion over the storms of life. Dominion over the storms of life. Next week, Sunday. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 37. So let all of us prepare for it. I repeat, next Sunday, dominion over the storms of life. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 37. You can read that scripture, very instructive. Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, 35 to 37. Very powerful scriptures, two powerful scriptures for us to look at. Is Reverend Edna there? So, he was in the... Uh, coordinator, let's round up. Yeah, Reverend Edna is not... Maybe he cannot uh, unmute himself, so... Yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming and uh, edit. Thank you. And, uh, and Jennifer, thank you. And, uh, you know, person is, but, um, and also, uh, please join the next uh, uh, Saturday, uh, 5, uh, 5 p.m. That we continue the study of the divine principle. <clears throat> the four, human fall, uh, part two, that will be very, very enlightening uh, teaching, and uh, you will discover uh, 
much more clearly what, what is the thing that created the, the beginning, then the causing the, all these uh, distractions, and disease and sickness and uh, immoralities and uh, you're experiencing and the divisions, wars. So uh, we'll study next Saturday, uh, 5 p.m. You said something about the scriptures that goes with, I mean, the write-ups that goes with the programs on Saturday. Um, how can I get my hand on those? You said something about sending it. Oh yes, uh, I can send you. Uh, and you are. Uh, uh, oh yeah, yes, I, I have your email address. I will send you the uh, copy of okay. the yes, uh, this chapter. Thank you. I will. Okay, thank you. Are you in? What kind of Michigan are you in? Evangelist say something. Evangelist, uh, Ikichukwa, the what part of Michigan you you are from? I'm I'm from Coldwater. By Coldwater. It's, it's about um, two and a half hours to um, west of Detroit. So, uh, Hey, Pastor Gabriel. Thank you. So, Evangelist. Evangelist, yeah? Evangelist Sonia. Yes. Oh. Yes. Uh, <laughs> pray, pray for us. Father, let us pray. Father, we, we just want to thank you that we have this opportunity one more time to come together in this fashion. We thank you because your word edifies us. It makes us strong. The countenance of one brightens the other. And so, God, we're all over America in different areas, God, but we come understanding that we are the church of the living God. We are your people. Call out, elect God, holy people. And we're being instructed weekly, God, how we are to live our lives. We thank you for your word of admiration. We thank you for your words are powerful. We thank you for the messenger, God, who you have sent your words through. I pray you continue to strengthen him, continue to empower him, continue to enable him, God, so that he can deliver your words and your words will be effective. We pray that as we hear the word, God, that we'll go and we'll just go over it. We will go back and we will revise what we were taught, God, that we'll understand that these are the teachings for our daily living, God, that we'll be in your words. We started to show ourselves approved unto God, that we'll believe that, my God, your words tell us that there shall be none of these diseases come upon us and our loved ones, God. And so we claim your promises. We stand on them and help us to live them out in our daily life. Bless us as we leave this prayer line. We're not leaving your presence. We pray you go before us, go with us, and God, bring us safely through this and new week. We say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 music. Oh. Thank you, Father. Fellowship.